Hey guys, and welcome to the Easter event guide, Cabbage Face Punch Bonanza. That's actually really hard to say. So this is the World Event 3 that they promised, and um, after Easter, it will be here. Uh, you won't be able to get the capes, and I don't think the gods will be back, but um, for sure the minigame will still be there. So this guide should be still working, you know, later on, like a month from now. So you go by the windmill in Lumbridge, um, kind of east of Draenor, where the Ceridoman, um camp was in the first world event and there's a little circle there that you can go in and then that's where you start the minigame so at the start of the game everyone spawns on one side and the objective of the game is to get to the other side in the time limit while collecting things and getting points so so right in the beginning right when the timer sounds and you go in kill the monkeys uh, collect the herbs and collect like the cabbage things um, until you're close to the timer, I'd say probably 15 seconds, and then run to the other side. That way you can get as many points as possible uh, before you get to the other side. So each time you do a skilling thing or killing the monkey, you get two points, and uh, for getting to the other side at the end of the wave, you get one point for every wave you've done. So like for example, you get one for wave one, you get two for wave two, you get three for wave three, and so on. So if you get to wave 10, it is 10 points. So it's really, really good if you get all the way to wave 10, but there are some hazards throughout the minigame. So after the first round, there should be one or two gorillas, which are other players, and they are like a gorilla guard, and they try to prevent you from getting to the, to the other side. And the two ways that I know of of becoming a gorilla is either dying during the minigame or staying inside the middle before the end of the wave um, when the timer sounds. So if you're a gorilla, don't worry, you still can gain some points, but not as much as the people that are still in the game but you still can gain a few points uh, here and there. So basically you're on the other side and you just repeat. But later in the game there's gonna be more gorillas and less people and you might have lower health so it's gonna be pretty hard to get to the other side sometimes, but uh, in general it shouldn't be too hard. So if you wanna gain HP, like you've lost some or something, do the skilling activity or killing the monkey and you will gain 10% of your HP. So it is really useful to do that but I do not recommend doing that while a gorilla is around because they will damage you more than what you'll heal. And you also get the two points. So it is a really good way of maximizing your points and surviving the minigame. But during the minigame, you can also use some uh, abilities, which I have the stun gorilla and then the flame thing, whatever, where you are immune to the flame walls, which is really, really good. Um, the stun ability works really well when a few are uh, following you. And uh, it's pretty self-explanatory, but they do have cooldowns. So uh, that is the only problem. So yeah, so long story short, basically all you do is you skill, get some points, get to the other side as fast as you can, don't lose HP from the gorillas or flame walls, and you also have to evade the the cauldrons, the green cauldrons, they do hit you with range, which can be, uh, you know, taking your HP down a lot, so yeah, just survive the minigame, it's only 10 rounds, and, and you should be good. As for the gorillas, all you have to do is try to kill the humans, which isn't the easiest thing ever you don't hit that much but um you can drop their hp as, as much as possible and they'll probably die in a few rounds if you get enough hp down on them remember if you're a gorilla your goal is to make the game as short as possible once all the players are dead the game will end and you'll get your points and it'll be faster games that way also another thing about being a gorilla you can sabotage skill plots and the monkeys or whatever and you get two points so it is two points every round you're a gorilla and then every time someone in the gorillas kills a human and makes them turn into a gorilla, you get two points. So not everything is lost while you're a gorilla, but you don't get as many points. So I think I got everything into this guide. There's not really much more that I know of or really you really need to know of. I mean, it's a really, really simple minigame. So I'm going to go into the rewards now and I'll meet you guys there. All right, so here's the rewards section of the guide. And uh, to see the rewards, it's the guy right here, the quartermaster. And uh, just click rewards, I guess. So to start off, these are the abilities that you can get for the minigame itself. Um, you start off with Ironhide, I believe, and then the stun guard, and then the flame proof. And so far, I did buy quick hands, which is actually very useful in the minigame. Um, it makes you gather resources quickly. And then, uh, yeah, so basically all these things like are relatively useful. Um, it's basically up to you if you want to spell, uh, spend your renown points on these things. But um, to me, I'd only think that uh, quick hands is useful. But that's just me. So moving on to the actual rewards. Um, there's three different bonus experience you can get. Um, mining, farming, and slayer. And considering I'm comp cape, my bonus experience is going to be different from you if you're not comped. 
So, uh, or, you know, 99 in these skills. So I get 121 uh, experience per uh, point and then for mining and then 73 for farming and then I think like 112, 111 for Slayer, yeah. Sadly, the farming one is the lowest, but um, that's the one I'm going to be using if I do have a bunch of points. Right now I'm saving up for seed aside, so I'm going to be going to get that probably after I make this guide. About the seed aside, it's actually very, very useful. Like, I've been watching videos on how it works and stuff. Like, it's kind of obvious what it works, but how it works. But um, like, during Slayer, it gets a lot of experience if you fight a monster that drops a lot of seeds. Like, I've seen a video that he got 20k farming experience in an hour just from the seed aside, which is really, really good. That's like an herb run and uh, grapevines at the same time. So, that's really, really good. I can't wait to get it. And then the next reward is the Slayer VIP ticket which is 30 points, so it's pretty cheap, I guess. And uh, basically you use this, and then um, when you get a Slayer task, you actually get two choices. So like you can get Abyssal Demons and Dark Beasts, and you get to pick. So in a way, it isn't as good as everyone thought it was gonna be, but for sure, this is a very good thing if you're gonna be slaying a lot, because it is only 30 points. That's like, I think you get two or three a game at least, if you even if you suck, so. So yeah, if I get a bunch of bonus experience in farming, I'm definitely gonna be buying these Slayer tickets. Well, for when I do my Slayer series. And then the last reward is a Patch Bomb, which I really don't think it's that uh, useful, to be honest. Like, um, farming, I don't care how long it takes me to farm. So, this will only be decent, I guess, on allotments, because they do take a while to actually collect all the fruit and stuff. So, um, I, I guess it could be useful there, but it's not worth 30 points to me. So, uh, yeah. And then the last award is just a cloak uh, based on your affiliation with the gods. And I probably will not buy these because it's 1,100 points and I don't really want to spend that. So so yeah, that pretty much concludes this guide. I may have missed some information because it is only like two days um, of this update actually being out. So if I did miss something, don't like, you know, scream at me in the comments or anything. Just like tell me that I did miss it um, unless a bunch of people have already have. I don't really want to see 500 comments of like the same thing like you missed blank. But... But basically, with the methods I told you, you should be able to do pretty decent on these games. And remember, there are FCs that you can join that have no PvP in it, which is very useful, but I, I haven't tried any of those yet. And I'm not going to say which FCs you can find out yourself, but that would be really cool. You get max points, everyone gets max points, no one kills people. That would be really, really nice. So, so yeah, just throwing that out there. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed, and uh, before I go... Um, I did get a pop filter for my mic, which is a thing that you put in front of it. It's like a mesh nylon thingy, and it gets rid of like the the pus sounds or whatever, and the s sounds a little bit. So uh, tell me how the quality has changed. I don't really see a difference. So maybe um, if someone has seen a difference, tell me because I really don't see one. So either way, I will see you guys in the next video.